Hey everybody, it's Al with Bobcat. So okay. today I wanted to look at machining a simple funnel. Uh, we have uh, a one inch diameter that goes into a 2.87 diameter. Uh, so we have a funnel type shape here. And uh, just wanted to go over some of the things that we can do to accomplish this. Now I've already set up a job in the cam tree. The first thing I want to do is drill out this hole. So I'm going to load a uh, drill hole. And then I'm going to select this uh, bottom radius here. Okay. And then I'm also going to pick the bottom so I can grab the depth. So I know how deep it's going to go. Alright, sounds good. Now, from here, I want to load in my machining strategy, so I want to create a hole. So I'm going to do a center drill and a drill. Now it's a one inch drill, so you know, I don't, just to, for fun, I'm going to do uh, two drill cycles. So I'm going to uh, spot the hole, then I'm going to drill, and then I'm going to step up in drill size. Um, the first drill I want to be. Uh, let me see here. The first drill I want to be, let's say, a half inch drill. And the second drill I want to be a one inch. So I'm going to do a half inch drill and then I'm going to do a one inch drill. Okay. So I'm going to spot, that's fine. Then I'm going to drill, that's fine. Uh, we'll peck it. And then I'm going to drill this one. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll peck as well. All right, so there we go. So that's going to spot drill, drill at one diameter, drill at another diameter, and that's going to handle the bottom side of the shape stepping up in drill size. The next thing that I want to look at is machining this cone. Now, there's a, a couple of different ways that we can do this. Um, you know, the first one that I'm going to look at is a three-axis routine. I'm going to select all my geometry here. And then for my cutting strategy, I'm going to use uh, a Z-level finish. Okay, a Z-level finish is like a 2D profile. It's going to follow the cutter. I'm going to use a half-inch ball. I'm going to set my step down. You know, I'm going to default. I'm going to machine with the defaults, but I'm going to say uh, innermost only, and I'll go ahead and compute this. So this is going to give me... Um, the cutter path on the the cone of this shape here. Let's go ahead and uh, run this through a simulation so we can see what's going on. All right, so we have our our spot drill. We have our half inch drill, and then we have our one inch drill. And then here, this is giving us our um, our ball mill and you can see how this is uh, stepping down and putting uh, putting this cone type shape into the part now you know there's there's quite a bit of material still left there so this is probably not the the ideal way to go about this we may want to rough some of that material out or use a larger cutter um, but you can see using the Z level finish actually it looks like it's it can fit all the way through the hole so it's going, um, it's going down to the bottom of the shape as well. I probably don't want it to do that, but you can see how a Z-level finish will machine uh, near vertical walls and just profile them like you would for 2D cutting. So, okay, so let's look at some of the other things that we can do here. So we, we drill their hole, and you could use different tool sizes. What I want to do is I want to uh, delete... Uh, let me edit the feature. So I'm going to edit the feature. I'm going to get rid of this Z-level rough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the advanced rough. So I'm going to use an advanced rough here. Okay. Uh, this time I'm going to jump up in tool size. Okay. All right. So I'm going to use an offset path. I have my depth of cut. I have my step over, and then I also want to use a step up, and what this will do is is uh, create four increments of your depth of cut on the way up. So I kind of like what that's doing there. And then the other thing that I want to do is uh, 
I want to, um, all right, so let's leave that the way that that is. But what I want to do is I want to tell it, I want to tell it where to start in the center because I've already drilled a hole. So I want to tell it to start in the center. So what I'm going to do is turn this, um, this layer on here. Let me uh, delete these dimensions. Uh, I'll just blank them out. Okay, so I want to put a point at the arc center of the bottom. Uh, let's say this hole here. Okay, and what that what that's going to do is I can use that uh, this drill tip position, so I can tell it where uh, the hole the pilot hole is, and that way it will start in the center. So let's go ahead and compute this. And once that's done simulating, or once it's done calculating, we'll launch it into a simulation. And this way we can see what's going on. Now, depth of cut, width of cut, tools that you're using, all of those will be uh, specific to the part that you're working on. Again, in this example, I'm just trying to go through uh, some of the workflow you can utilize. So we created a drilling cycle with multiple holes to uh, open up the holes. So we spot drill, we drill to one diameter, we drill to another diameter. Then we're gonna use the advanced rough routine. Uh, this is gonna be to remove the material, uh, kind of like a pocketing routine. You can see how it started right in the center there. So we're gonna use this more like, um, like a pocket routine, but then also it's gonna do a step up so it's basically going to finish the the wall of the cone for us. So uh, again, uh, if this is a, a shape that shapes like this you're dealing with often, uh, you can drill out your your holes in the center, and then uh, you know you can use a Z-level finish, which is like a waterline routine, or you could use an advanced rough which will allow you to clear out the majority of the stock and then you can come back and use the uh, intermediate steps to have it step up. Now, again, it, we don't want this to go all the way down to the bottom and uh, that's what it looks like it's doing here, okay? So how do we, how do we stop the tool from going down to the to the bottom of the part. We really don't want it to go much further than this intersection. We want it to go past this intersection, but we don't want it to go all the way down to the bottom. So the way that we do that is uh, we're gonna um, we're gonna find out what the distance is from from here to here. So the so the way that I, I'm gonna do that uh, is I'm gonna blank out my tool path, and this circle is on center so I really only need to find the arc center of this one so I'm gonna measure this okay and this is gonna give me a uh, a Z value this is 1.4 okay so when I get back into this feature here under parameters you have uh, levels so I'm gonna say bottom of job is gonna be minus 1.5 okay and I'll recompute that and what's going to happen now is I'm controlling how deep the toolpath is going down into the part. Uh, this is one way to do it. And another way is to draw a surface uh, to cap it off, and, and that way it will stop it from cutting any deeper. Uh, a combination of either one. Uh, usually it's easier just to, to measure it and to find out the value of how deep it needs to go. Um, we'll run this through simulation again. So we have our first routine second routine, third routine, and then now we're getting into the advanced rough. So we can see how it's starting in the hole, working its way out, and then once it gets down to the bottom, it's gonna it's gonna re-rough. So let me bring this slider along a little further. see how it's re-roughing that uh, shape and working its way back up to the top. So if you guys have any uh, questions, comments, or feedback, pr please reply back to the Facebook, the YouTube, or whatever thread this video may be posted in. Otherwise, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much.